All right, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing whatever happened to the Cafe Parisian, which was a first-class exclusive restaurant. Kind of similar type room to the private Promadon located in the Millionaire Suites. It was located right behind the first-class aft grand staircase and right next to the a la carte restaurant, which I will also be talking about in this video towards the stern of the ship mirroring the idea of a sidewalk cafe painted in white with live English ivy and a long green carpet that ran the length of the room. It was designed to occupy a part of the space which on the Olympics served as a rarely used B-deck Providon located on the starboard side. The cafe was connected to the Ali Cart restaurant, which was also a first class restaurant. And like the restaurant, it was open from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. It could accommodate up to 68 passengers and was known as a place where friends could meet for conversation with drinks and light refreshments. It was also the first of its kind on any British passenger liner. On the Titanic, this spot was part of the first class Promadon, which ran the full length on both sides of B deck. It was later installed on the Olympic and privacy screens were added along with double doors as well, making it fully enclosed. On April 14th, the night the Titanic struck the iceberg, the menu included oyster, salmon, roast, duckling, along with jelly, chocolate, and vanilla eclairs. So... When it comes to this cafe, really, really interesting in contrast to the Olympic is the improvement that they made. So the Olympic was built before the Titanic, and the Titanic was a near model to what the Olympic was, except a few notable changes. This was one of the bigger changes. That is why we have an actual photo that on the Olympic just wouldn't exist at the time because on the Olympic, this was just a normal B-deck Promadon. What they found out is they had so much space for a you know, you know, public Promadon deck, it was rarely used. So that's why on the Titanic, when they were building it, they made an upgrade and they put in this little cafe that, again, when I look at this, it reminds me of the windows that you see in the private millionaire suites the two private Promadon decks also exclusive on Titanic as well. This was definitely one of the luxury things for sure. And it was located, you can see right next to, if you walk out those doors, you, were, you will run into the Ali Cart restaurant. Both of the restaurants shared the same servers. When it comes to the Cafe Parisian, what really surprised me were the hours, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., meaning that it closed just before the Titanic struck the iceberg. And when it comes to where is it now on the wreck, well, unfortunately, this was also part of the stern section that completely imploded. So, you know, I've done a few videos now where I really can't talk about it. This section is completely destroyed. It, it does not exist anymore on the wreck. And it really didn't even exist back in 1985 when they found it. It's not like there was deterioration. I mean, there certainly has been deterioration with the stern to where now with the 3D images that we have, it's completely toppled on, on top of itself. And now it just looks like one giant car crash. It's kind of hard to explain because everyone thinks of the movie back in 97 when they think about the split up. The split up in real life was a lot, how do I put this, a lot more low key. You know, because they jazzed it up during the movie. They made it rise higher on an angle. It really didn't go that high. So realistically, when the stern was going to the ocean floor, this was definitely one of the early rooms on the stern, you know, towards the front, if, if that makes sense, that was getting a bunch of water located right behind the aft grand staircase. And the aft grand staircase was also completely destroyed. We know that. You know, Cameron really could have fit this area in the movie if he wanted to. The only scene we have of it is the deleted scene, the how about a little ice scene. Uh, you know, him deleting that, it was unrealistic considering, you know, that scene was taking place right after the Titanic struck the iceberg, which was right around 1140. So that, that would be like 1142, 1143. 
it closes at 11. So maybe he thought it's unrealistic. Maybe it was just kind of weird comedy relief that he really didn't want in it. I actually agree with him removing that that scene. It was just kind of weird, but that would that was the only time we saw this area. They could have easily had Rose, Cal, whoever eat there because it is a first class area. But instead, it feels like instead of eating here, they chose the palm court for that one scene you know, early in the movie. Now, when it comes to the other restaurant right next to it, like right when you go inside the Promadon area, because remember, it was just one giant on the Olympic. It was just one giant Promadon deck. They exclusively closed this section of the Promadon off for this uh, cafe to be installed. And once you go inside, you reach another restaurant, the Ali Cart restaurant, which was also on B deck, known for being luxurious, open exclusively to first class passengers only. The Olympic and the Titanic were the first British ships to feature restaurants separate from their main dining rooms. The restaurant was the preferred alternative to the main dining room and gave passengers an option to eat somewhere else other than the main dining hall. A passenger could choose to eat exclusively in this restaurant for the entire voyage and receive a little kickback, a few dollars rebate on their ticket at the time of booking. Unlike the main dining area, the restaurant gave passengers the freedom to eat wherever they liked between 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. The restaurant was not managed by White Star Line and the staff was not part of the regular crew. It was known for having walnut paneling and columns. Mirrors were also installed within the paneling, imitating windows, and the room was divided into bays along either side with oval mirrors inset. Along the forward wall was a large buffet with a peach-colored marble top, and along the aft wall was a raised bandstand for the orchestra. The restaurant also had its own reception room located next to the aft grand staircase on B-deck. On the night of April 14th at the Alicart restaurant, a wealthy couple from Philadelphia hosted a dinner party at the restaurant in honor of the captain. Little fun fact there, it was Cal Hockley's family. Yes, from Philadelphia, from, from Pennsylvania who hosted it now. Uh, but that's a very, very beautiful restaurant. That's one of the new things that both the Olympic and the Titanic had, which was really state-of-the-art. You didn't have to eat in the main dining area, the main first class, second class, third class. For the first class passengers, they had a number of different places that they could eat at that had really extensive hours, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and its current status is, oh, it's also destroyed. Yeah, it's, it's, there's nothing left of it. Uh, it's just based off of its location, you know, back towards the stern. Both of these places were located right below the first class smoking room. And you can see one of the cool things with the Promadon restaurant was the windows. You could look out and see the water. Although it is funny in the renderings, it looks like the seats might be a little bit too low to actually look out and look at the water. But that is just the story on what happened to the Cafe Parisian. Guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.